How to rebuild a Stuart Models 5A steam engine. This is part 29, finishing the eccentric rods and putting it all together. The eccentric rods are not yet finished, but I thought what I would do as a bit of a diversion is drill the holes in the eccentric straps and carefully thread the holes using a 4BA tap. I haven't shown all of the tapping process, just a general taster of how to do it. After tapping the part on the bench to get rid of all the metal particles, in this clip I'm bolting the eccentric rod to the eccentric strap, just to make sure the bolts fit and everything lines up. If the top part of the eccentric rod is not at a perfect 90 degrees to the eccentric, then I'm going to have problems when I try and assemble the engine. That's why I'm bolting them together at this stage, and the good news is, they are at 90 degrees. If they weren't at 90 degrees, the best time to correct the fault is now, before I mill the slot in the end of the eccentric rods, but everything's fine, so I can carry on. I'm using a felt dip pen to mark the approximate position where I'm going to mill out the slot. And before anybody writes in, I do know that this is a very unengineering like way of approaching the job, but really all I'm doing with the felt dip pen is making a mark on the metal so I can use a scriber to mark out the proper position and I'll be able to see it through the black pen. And now it's over to the threading of the other eccentric strap to make sure that the other eccentric rod is in line with that too. And after a bit of deburring and assembly, I have a pair of eccentrics, eccentric straps and eccentric rods that are quite accurate. I'm fairly pleased with these. And when I put the parts loosely in position on the engine, everything lines up quite well, better than I expected. It must be beginner's luck. And now to mill the slot. The parts mounted in the milling machine, the end stop is set on the milling table, and I just mill the slot. This is a very strange material. I've never really come across this before. It looks like cast iron, it smells like cast iron, it tastes like cast iron, but it machines like steel. If you look at the way the chippings are coming off, I can see that it's not cast iron. The next time I need to speak to Stuart Models, I will ask them what this is just out of curiosity. I thank the viewers who have written in, telling me what it is. I don't fully understand their descriptions, but it sounds very technical to me. I'm not too well up on metallurgy or metallurgy, however it's pronounced in the different countries, but thank you for your descriptions. Milling these slots in the eccentric rods is a very simple and repetitive process. The only advice that I can really give is make sure that you clamp the part very firmly in the machine vise. Oh yes, and take many light cuts instead of heavy cuts. That way the piece of metal will survive the process without jumping out of the machine vise. And while this simple job is underway, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my Patreon subscribers. It really does make a difference. I can spend more hours making these videos than I could if I didn't have the support of Patreon. There are links in the text at the start page of most of my videos, and also link boxes pop up right at the end of the video. And once again, thank you very much to the Patreon subscribers who donate a small amount each month to allow me to make these videos. Well, the milling is well underway. Is this the first one or is it the second one? I've sort of lost the plot with this. There's such a lot of it. This milling cutter, by the way, is not the finished size. The slot needs to be wider than the milling cutter. It's never a good idea to go straight in with a milling cutter of the finished size because you do need to get a good finish on the inside of the fork. And you do this with the existing milling cutter by slightly changing the position of the milling table and taking some very fine cuts down the slot. Now comes the hard part. First of all, some machine oil and then a lot of reciprocation. And I mean a lot of this. The more work you put into this part of the job, the better the components will look. I'm starting off with 280 grit sandpaper. This is quite coarse and then I work my way down until I get to about 400 grit. For steel parts, I find that 400 grit sandpaper gives me the finish that I need. I don't want these parts to be highly polished. I would save that for brass, copper and gunmetal parts. And now it's time to finally assemble the parts ready to fit to the engine. You will notice that I've put some marks on these with a the centre punch. And that's just to show me which part fits where. I wish I was a better engineer, but really, there are minor discrepancies in the hole drillings, so I need to know which parts fit where if ever I dismantle them. I seem to make more mistakes when drilling holes in pieces of metal. I seem to get more errors than I do when I'm machining the parts on a lathe or a milling machine. I think it could be the drilling machine is a bit naff. Well, it is. It's terrible. It's one that I bought a few years ago. And with hindsight, I wish I'd never bought this machine. I really need to buy a new one that actually drills holes where I point the drill. So here's the story so far. I have a pair of eccentric straps and some eccentric rods. And now it's time to fit them to the engine. You will notice that the marks I made on the parts are to the inside. 
so they won't show when the engine's assembled. And now you can see why I drilled the hole in the bottom of the eccentric strap. It makes fitting and adjusting the position of the eccentric sheaves very much easier. I need to make some proper steel pins from some hexagon bar. But as Black Gates Engineering are currently at an exhibition, they probably won't have any stock left up at the shop, as they take a lot of the stock with them to the exhibitions. So as a temporary measure only, I'm securing the eccentric rod fork to the expansion link using some brass bolts. I've removed the valve chest cover so you can see the valve inside, and what I'm doing at the moment is moving it up and down over the ports to make sure it travels at an equal distance. I'll be doing another episode all about setting the valve timing and finishing off the engine. The rest of this video is the engine's first run, and it's not really edited very much, so this is the way it worked. The piston gland is blowing, the flywheel's knocking a bit because the key's too small. The timing's not 100%, but you'll see what happens. And that's it from me, I'm not going to speak over the rest of the video. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.